And the final video of chapter six, video eight, we are going to finish up with our geometric distribution. How do we actually get these answers without necessarily using the formula? All right, so I've got a scenario here. Safety engineer studies industrial accidents in a plant, suspecting that 40% are caused by employees not following instructions to test this theory. Accident reports are randomly selected until one is found that is caused by an employee failing to follow safety procedures. So question one, what is the probability that it takes exactly four reports to find the first accident caused by an employee failing to follow safety procedures? So this is following a geometric distribution. We don't know the number of trials. We could keep drawing out randomly accident reports until we finally get that first success that it was caused by an employee failing to follow safety procedures. So how would this look? So we got to make up a random variable here so we could write out our formula and then we'll talk about how can we get the answer from the calculator. So just like before when we had binome PDF and binome CDF, we're going to have very similar uh, calculator commands for a geometric distribution. So let's do, um, man, I don't know. Let's do A as our random variable. For the number of um, accident reports until we get our first success, which represents someone who wasn't following the rules. So what is the probability that A, that it takes exactly four reports? So what that would mean is we had an accident report, the first one, that was not caused by an employee failing to follow safety procedures. And we were told that there's a 40% chance that it is caused by someone not following the rules. So we had a 60% chance of getting the first three accident reports to be not because someone wasn't following the rules. And then we got our 40% chance. And again, we only want one of those. And so we could easily type this into our calculator. This isn't going to take too long to do. It's going to be the inequality situations in which you're really going to want to know how to use the calculator commands. Okay? So again, we could type this into our calculator, get the final answer. We don't necessarily need a calculator command to do this for us. But if you want to feel better about yourself, that you're getting the correct answer, then go to second variables, same place we would find normal CDF, same place where we did normal PDF and normal CDF, or binome PDF and binome CDF, sorry. But again, it's going to be faster to start from the bottom of the list. So if you press up at the very beginning, you'll start from the bottom of the list. And I want you to go to GeoMet PDF. Now, there's only two parameters we need for GeoMet PDF and CDF. Uh, versus three that we needed for binome PDF and CDF. We needed to know the number of trials for a binomial distribution. But in a geometric, we don't have a set number of trials. So P represents our probability of success, which was a 40% chance. And then X represents the same thing like it did for a binome PDF. It is the number of trials, the exact number of trials, I should say, until the first success. And so in this scenario, that was four. We said we wanted to have the fourth report be that first success. Now, if you have an older calculator and your calculator screen just says GeoMet PDF, then you're going to put these values in that same order. We're going to do P.4 or 0 0.40. There's the probability of success, comma, and then X, the exact number of trials, four. And then you can press enter and you can get that answer. So we said that probably that A is equal to four. That was really 0.6 to the third power times 0.4 to the first power. And our calculator, again, I'm going to write out the calculator command down here. This was GeoMet PDF with 0.4 comma four. And then we're going to get that answer and we're going to make it look like we typed all that into our calculator. And I didn't write any of these down, so I got to do it real quick. So 0.4, x value 4, paste, I get 0 0.0864. So I got about an 8 to 9% chance that I'm going to get, that it's going to take exactly four reports before I get that first report where someone wasn't following the rules and caused an accident. Now, do you have to write out the calculator command 
to get credit. No. This would be the main thing I would want to see written out as your work. That you're showing me you understand how the formula works and you use the calculator command to get the final answer. But again, what if you didn't use the calculator command and you just typed in your calculator, 0.6 to the third times 0.4 to the first, you're going to get the same answer. And that is 100% okay. You don't have to use the calculator command. Now let's look at some inequality ones because these are the ones that get a little more interesting. So what is the probability that it takes no more than five reports to find the first accident caused by an employee failing to follow safety procedures? So what is the probability that A is no more than five? So we don't want to go beyond five, which means we want to be less than or equal to five. Now that means that it could have been the first report we looked at. Bing! Got someone not following the rules. But it could take the second report, it could be the third report, the fourth report, or third, third report, fourth report, or all the way up to the fifth report. And then we would stop. So in showing my work, I would show the A equals 1 scenario. So 0.4 to the first, done. Now you could put the 0.6 to the zero. We didn't have any failures. We got our first success first time around, plus dot, dot, dot. We got our first success here at the end, but then how many failures did we have before that first success? We had to have four of them to get up to this fifth trial here. Now, this still isn't that bad to type out into your calculator, but there's multiples of these, right? You have five situations in which you'd have to type these out and add them all together. So how do we now turn this into the final answer? Now we get to use GeoMet CDF. Now it works the same exact way as binome CDF. So P, we have our probability of success, 0.4. The X value represents the maximum number of trials that go down to one trial. So this is maxing out and going all the way down to we got it on the first time. And we wanted that to be specifically, what, five, right? Five was the maximum number, and it went down to the first success trial. So this is okay. And this would be 0.4 comma five. And so now we can get what that answer is going to be. So all of this, let me grab my calculator here. So if I were to do geomet CDF, 0.4 comma uh, five, that's going to give me 0 0.9222 to four significant digits. There's another four, and then it's, it's exact. So there, I'll do all five significant digits there. So I got about a 92 93% chance that it's going to take no more than five reports to get that first success. So again, you don't have to use the GeoMet CDF command, but it's definitely going to help shorten things up here. Now, what gets trickier? is when it goes in the other direction. Nope, not that one, this one. What is the probability that it takes at least three reports? So greater than or equal to three. So that means we're starting with three and it could go to four or five or six or seven or infinity? Where, where do we stop at? We don't want to do this. This is going to go on forever. So how do we do this? This is where it really is going to make a whole lot more sense that we want to do this with the complement rule. Now, you can, I don't, I, how do you even show this? Like X is, I don't know, approaching infinity? You know, and you could show the three scenario plus dot, dot, dot up to the infinite scenario? Like, I don't know. It doesn't end. So... What I really should do instead is show my work with the complement rule. So let's flip this thing around, okay? So this is what we really want to find from three up to the infinite case, but let's consider the scenarios we don't want to see happen. So let's take one minus, what are the scenarios we don't want to see happen? We don't want to see the two case or the one case. So we want to get rid of that A is less than or equal to two. So this is going to be one minus 
that a equals the one case or the a equals two case. And we want to add those two probabilities together and subtract it away from all one. So here's how I would write out the formula as part of my work. The one scenario, that was just 0.4 to the first power. And then if it took two, that would be 0.6 to the first times 0.4 to the first, right? I had a failure and then I had a success. Now again, this really isn't that terrible to type into your calculator. But if I said, what if it took at least, I don't know, uh, 50 reports? And then you're like, ooh, that, that's not going to be very fun to type in my calculator. I mean, I gave you one that there's only two scenarios you didn't want to see happen. That makes it a lot nicer. So now let's talk about how we're going to use GeoMet CDF in this scenario. So again, we want the 0.4. But the x, if we're going to use the complement rule, we need to flip it around the other way. We want the maximum number of trials that we don't want to see. Now, what was that maximum number we didn't want to see? We wanted to see 3 up to infinity. So what was the biggest number below our minimum that we did want to see? That was the 2 scenario. So we want to put in a 2 here. Now really, what I need to do is start off uh, my calculator with the 1 minus. So I'm not just going to have 0.4 comma 2, because that's going to give me what I don't want to see happen. So you could figure out what this comes out to be, and then you could say, all right, now I want to do 1 minus whatever that answer was here. And then that would give you your answer overall. So what you could do is do it that way, or you could do already type in one minus and then go find the geomet cdf command and then do 0.4 comma 2. So again, this is going to subtract away the a equals 2 case and it's going to subtract away the a equals 1 case from all of the cases, right? That one represents all possible values of a. So 1, 2, 3, all the way up to infinity. So if we're going to subtract away the 1 scenario and the 2 scenario, that's leaving us with the 3 to the infinite scenario. All right, so let me jump back to here. What does this now come out to be? So again, I, I'm going to do 1 minus geomet cdf 0.4 comma 2. Do, 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 1 minus geomet cdf 0.4 comma 2. And that gives me exactly, all of this comes out to be a nice 36%. So again, if you, if, if the math is small enough, if it's short enough like this, and you're going, I'm not really getting a good feel for how Geomet CDF especially works, then if it's short enough, just type it in your calculator, right? Type all this in your calculator and you're going to get that answer. Or if you're okay and you keep practicing with the Geomet CDF commands, and again, it's tricky like the Binome CDF command, it takes a little bit of practice, but eventually there's really only one of two situations in which the Binome or the Geomet CDF command will work. All right. Leaving you with this you-do problem. And I want you to figure out what are the final answers here. You don't have to worry about writing out the formula, but just figure out what do they come out to be. So this is, you know, carefree practice here. Just try it out. Try using the Geomet PDF. Try using the Geomet CDF. And let's see if you can successfully use those calculator commands. And if not, we'll talk about it the next day in class, and we'll get you squared away.